coming to the point of objective consciousness and subjective consciousness. We are discussing about this. So, starting from the point of meeting somebody, the unconsciousness of object obsession, it is called object obsession, is going on unconsciously. This has to go away. If a person really wants to have a Self-realization, these are the ways, apart from meditating, doing so many sadhanas, that's a different part. In moment to moment, every day, this vigilance, this kind of constant observation of the mind, how the mind is building up the ego. We have to prevent this building of this wrong structure. It is like, it is your place. Now we are sitting here. It's our place. If somebody comes and constructing something side by this hall, will you allow? <laughs> you will ask first of all, who are you? See, this is our place, Aranda Mandir. So we purchased this land, we constructed some meditation hall here, we have been meditating here. What are you doing? You are making another foundation. Who are you? You will ask, you know. But when it comes to the formation of the eye, the shadow eye, is it not the same responsibility to ask the same question? Here is a self, that's my nature, the bliss is my nature. The peace is my nature, courage is my nature, that's my own home. Who are you to come here and make a foundation without my knowledge? How many people ask this question? <laughs> Honestly, let us check ourselves. How much we are allowing the unwanted evils inside? No? If one mosquito sits on the skin, we are much bothered. Of course, we have to be bothered. Otherwise, we will end up with the big diseases. But ego is the biggest disease, as I know. <laughs> no? Why you first allow and then you demolish? <laughs> Better from the beginning you stop it. The moment somebody is coming with the instruments here, tools here, to make a foundation. It is called encroachment. There is a word, you know, encroachment. Same thing. The inner world also the same terminology. You can use it, nothing wrong. The formation of the ego is nothing but the encroachment which we allowed. In fact, we are also helping. Suppose somebody is making a small building and foundation here. Suppose Pravaka herself is going and helping the people. <laughs> come on, come on, I will also dig the ground. We will make a building something. How it will be? What is the meaning there? Like this. We ourselves cooperated with the formation of the unwanted building called ego, called the Shadow, I, not at all necessary. The whole misery because of this reason only. There are no many reasons for the miserable way of living life. This is the only reason. One and the only reason. If we are careful in this area, there is no need to be miserable. There is no need to read a lot of scriptures, religious scriptures, because our life itself is a scripture. That's the biggest book, holy book. Holy scripture is the experience of somebody else. That's not our experience. For example, Bible, the New Testament means it's the experience of Jesus 
if it is the holy books of the Vedas, Vedantas, or Upanishads, it's an experience of the Rishis. I have to find my own experience. So a common scripture is life. It's a common scripture to everyone, irrespective of any religion. Life is the biggest scripture. Let's study it. Let's learn it. Let's experiment it. Let us experience it. Alive book. Life is an alive book. Life, what is life? Which we are discussing now. <laughs> this is life. Though apparently it looks like a spiritual satsang, it is a life satsang. <laughs> For me, inseparable. Spirituality and life is inseparable. Every moment there is a scope of spirituality. Spirit, experience of the spirit. Life and spirit can't be separated. If you had the capacity to observe the mind. So, though it looks like apparently mind, okay. This is another unconsciousness. Oh, mind I know. Same thing like you ask many things like what is God, what is mind. People say, I know mind. What is there to analyze much? That is the main point to be analyzed. <laughs> it needs laboratory, a big laboratory. Very big laboratory is required to study the specimen called <laughs> mind. <laughs> Such a complex specimen. which is capable of changing our whole life. It, it has the capacity to change the Ganges into the ditch. That much capacity it has. No? So it's very much necessary to go deep into what is mind, how it is functioning, what are the components, how they are all working, either separately or sometimes they join some group also. <laughs> because they are all killers. Sometimes person come alone and kill. Sometimes they come with a gang and kill. So here we are trying to kill the killer. <laughs> Keeping it as a friend. <laughs> this is intelligence. That's why we are every day in the session very minutely we are discussing about the subtler way of functioning of the mind. Subtler. Many times they are not apparent, they are very subtle. Silent killers. People say blood pressure is the silent killer. Of course it kills the physical body. But mind is the more silent killer, it kills the life itself. <laughs> Because these exercises are not happening overall, you know what is the result happening? The ultimate result not attending the mind and observing the mind and knowing the tricks of the mind. There is a result. Because this whole world is functioning out of cause and effect. Karma. Karma is nothing but cause and effect. The whole world is functioning behind reasons. What happens is retardation, 
retardation. If somebody is not working on this, retardation is definite. You know what, are, what is retardation? For example, when the boy or a girl is 10 year old, you can normally see that much growth in the physical level. You can predict the age by looking at the physical structure of anybody, normally. Exceptions are always there. That's a different thing. There is an age for the growth of mind also. Psychic age. Can you guess it? Can you judge it? Can you measure it? How you will measure? Physical age you will measure. You can say by looking at the figure, okay, he may be like this, between this age to that, okay. But what about the mind age, the mental age? This is a very important thing today we are discussing. The forgotten language. This is, a, this is a pathetic thing, you know. What is to be remembered, we have forgotten. What is to be forgotten, we remember. <laughs> this is a danger. You know. Whenever I fill up my forms in the passport or wherever the government procedures are there, when they are asking what is your age, I am really doubtful to fill up the column. Two columns I am always in doubtful. When fill up the forms, when they ask the sex, I am doubtful. I am a male or female. <laughs> and then I fill up. You know, something I have to fill up. And the second point is, your age. Or shall I fill up? Shall I fill up my physical age or my mental age? It is not mentioned in the form. No government form you available physical age and mental age. I have not seen such a form. I think it is better to introduce that also. If I become a Prime Minister, I will introduce physical age and mental age to create an awareness. But I am not going to become PM, definitely. <laughs> I can suggest to the PM. <coughs> After all, he is our friend. We don't know where is a measurement, how we can measure the mental, you see, mentally retarded, mentally retarded, you know. But the question is, almost 90% of the people are mentally retarded. <laughs>